A little further around the coast from where we gathered our razor clams is the old fishing port of Newlyn. Just west of Penzance, this town has a rather impressive claim to fame. Here, but you can't quite see it, we have a tidal observatory which is entirely responsible for the mean sea level of the whole of the country. It's in that shed, you see the, the red and white one? And it's a grade two listed building. How British is that? This is really important stuff, because from this scruffy hut built in 1915, the average sea level, known as the mean sea level, was calculated. And that's important because sea level is the benchmark from which the height of everything else in Britain, such as our mountains and buildings, is measured. Richard Cockrum is so taken with this place that he's just written a book about it. Crikey. This looks really nice. This is the tide gauge. Okay. That was installed in 1984, which was the uh, original way of measuring the mean sea level. There was a there was a well that goes down to the seabed with a float in it and a mechanism that drove a pen on this revolving cylinder covered with graph paper. Originally, it was driven by clockwork, so they had to wind the clock every 24 hours to keep, yeah. keep the cylinder rotating, and then they had to send the paper off to Southampton to the Ordnance Survey. It seems, seems very sort of Victorian clockwork. And... In the 30s, they got electricity, so it was slightly more up to date, right. but still, I absolutely agree. Below our feet is a narrow well which goes all the way to the bottom of the sea. As the tide comes in, a float attached to a rope rises. Then as the tide goes out, the water gets lower in the well and the float falls. As the float rises and falls, measurements are taken and it is the average of these measurements which gives us our mean sea level. To be as accurate as possible, the scientists had to spend six years taking measurements before they could finally work out Britain's mean sea level. This would pick up tsunamis from Japan, by the way. There'd be a little, little kink on the... On the I know. Yeah. And that was important too, because then you could measure the speed of tsunamis travelling across the oceans. In the mid-80s, tide gauges around the world were actually coming up with automated methods of doing it. Yeah. So when was the last human tide observer as opposed to it being automated? Yes, the last observer came in in uh, 1984. Yeah. And for the first time, it was a local lady called Dawn Turner. Prior to that, A, it had always been men, and B, they'd always been uh, employees of the Ordnance Survey. The important thing, actually, for me is that the Ordnance Survey was sufficiently far-sighted yeah. to keep this place maintained, a bit of a mess, but still maintained, yeah. for 100 years, not knowing anything about climate change, and now it's a really important measure of sea level change, which is, you know, tells you all about uh, climate change. Well, we should feel proud in core, because presumably, if you think of the mean, to the mean level of yes. water, mm. that's how we tell how high our mountains Absolutely. are. Absolutely, yeah. So how high Brown Willie is, for yes, example. Yes, exactly. Without this, yes. we wouldn't know. No. Or Snowdonia, or that's Ben right. Levis. <laughs>